Hey everyone, welcome back to Stack Trekker. In the last video, we installed Elasticsearch. You can find the link to that tutorial in the top right. Now it's time to organize our data properly. Today we'll talk about mappings, what they are, how to create them, and how to use them to structure our data. I have a file prepared with 250 movie titles, which you can download. The link will also be in the tutorial description. Uh, we're gonna upload this data into Elasticsearch. I'll show you how to do this using Postman. Finally, we'll run five basic search queries to retrieve movie data. All right, let's get started. Before we start making requests, let's talk about the tool I'll be using, Postman. Postman is a powerful API testing tool that allows us to send HTTP requests, see responses, and organize API calls easily. Instead of writing curl commands in the terminal every time, we can use Postman's user-friendly interface to interact with Elasticsearch. Now, to make our work more efficient, I've prepared a Postman collection. So what is a collection? It's essentially a folder where we can group all related API requests. In this case, I've created a collection specifically for our Elasticsearch project. One of the benefits of using collections is that we can define common settings, like our base URL. Instead of typing URL in every request, we set it once in the collection and all requests automatically use it. As you can see here, I've set the base URL variable to our Elasticsearch instance. This way, if we ever change the server URL, we only need to update it once. I've also added authentication details, our login and password inside the collection. This means that every request inside this collection will automatically use these credentials, so we don't have to enter them manually each time. With these settings in place, we can now focus on making requests without worrying about repeating configurations. All right. Let's move on and start creating our mapping. So, what is a mapping? Think of it as a schema or description of our data in Elasticsearch. Unlike SQL databases where you define a table structure up front, Elasticsearch uses mappings to define how each field should be stored and searched. I've prepared a mapping for you. You can see the URL where you can download it. This URL will also be provided in the description. So we just need to put everything from this file into Postman. Here, we want to create a mapping description for our movies. We specify all the fields we want to include, such as title, year of creation, and so on. We also specify the type of each field so we can easily search for values later. So let's create it. We select the requests I've prepared for you. Remember, we have already defined the base URL and the credentials, so we don't need to provide them repeatedly. Just press the send button and that's it. A new mapping, description named Movies, is now created in the Elasticsearch database. One thing to mention, in Postman, be careful with the commands. For the same URL but with a different command, you will get a different result. For example, with the command get, you will retrieve the data, but with the command delete, the data will be deleted. So please use the same command you see on the screen. So now let's get our created mapping. Here you can see the mapping stored in the Elasticsearch database for the movies. Also, I will show the command to delete the mapping, but we will not run it because we need this mapping. Now, let's upload our movies. Here's a quick look at the movies250.json file. You can download this file from the following URL. This URL is also included in the description of this video. This file contains an array of movie objects with fields like title, year, genre, director, and more. So let's upload it. Use this command and specify the file to upload. Make sure the file is correctly formatted and contains all the necessary data. Once the upload process starts, Elasticsearch will process the file and store the movie titles in the database. Here's the result of the upload. All 250 movie titles are now successfully stored. You can verify the upload by checking the response from Elasticsearch. If everything went smoothly, you should see a confirmation message indicating that the data was indexed correctly. In case of any errors, double check the file format, ensure that Elasticsearch is running properly, and try the upload again. Now we can retrieve the movie titles using the get command. By default, Elasticsearch returns a maximum of 10 entries per request. 
This limit is set to optimize performance and prevent excessive data retrieval in a single query. However, if you need more results at once, you can adjust the query parameters to fetch a larger number of entries. Let's request all 250 movie titles. To do this, we can use the size parameter in the query to specify the number of results we want. Once the request is executed, Elasticsearch will return all the stored titles in JSON format. You can then parse this data to extract and display the movie titles in a structured way. Now we have successfully retrieved all 250 movie titles. The data is available for further processing, analysis, or display. If needed, we can perform additional operations such as filtering, sorting, or searching through the titles using Elasticsearch's powerful query capabilities. Now for the fun part, searching. Let's start with some simple queries to explore our movie database. Elasticsearch allows us to perform powerful searches using different filters and parameters, making it easy to find exactly what we need. Let's try searching for a specific movie. Suppose we are looking for Inception. We specify that we want to search by movie title and input Inception as the query. Elasticsearch quickly scans the indexed data and returns a result matching our search. If the title exists in our database, it appears in the response along with other relevant details like release year, genre, and rating. This type of search is useful when we need to check whether a particular movie is in our collection. Now let's refine our search and look for movies based on their production year. Suppose we want to find all movies released from 2010 onward. We modify our query to filter by release year, specifying a range starting from 2010. Elasticsearch processes the request and returns all movies that meet the criteria. This is especially useful when analyzing trends over specific periods or looking for the latest releases in our database. Next, we want to see only action movies. S since our database includes genre information, we can simply add a filter to our query, specifying action as the required genre. Elasticsearch then narrows the results to include only action films. This kind of search helps when we want to browse movies based on personal preferences or categorize them for recommendations. If needed, we can combine multiple genres to refine our selection even further. Finally, let's organize our movie list by popularity. We want to sort all movies by rating, displaying the highest rated ones first. We adjust our query to sort results in descending order based on their rating score. Elasticsearch processes the request and returns a neatly arranged list starting with the most popular movies and ending with the least. This feature is useful when we want to discover top-rated films quickly, uh, whether for personal viewing or for creating a must-watch list. With these different search methods, we can efficiently explore our movie database and retrieve exactly what we need with ease. Elasticsearch's flexibility allows for even more advanced queries, such as combining filters, searching within specific fields, or applying fuzzy matching to find movies even if we don't remember the exact title. In this tutorial, we covered the basics of Elasticsearch mappings, learned how to define a schema for our movie data, and uploaded JSON data into our index. We also ran basic search queries to retrieve movies by title, genre, release year, and IMDb rating. These are the building blocks for working with Elasticsearch effectively. Now that we've mastered basic searches, we can start experimenting with more complex queries. So I hope this was interesting. Thank you for watching my tutorials. If you enjoyed this, please like the video and subscribe. See you later. Bye.